Okay, so is this right? Or is that right? Which one is it? Let's talk about it. Hey, I'm Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. I've been doing Home Studio Corner since 2009. If you have a home studio, meaning a room in your house where you've got maybe a microphone, interface, speakers, headphones, you're trying to make music, I'm here to help. If you haven't explored my channel, there are literally thousands in the thousands of videos here to help you, okay? So today we're gonna to talk about age old question, age old question. Moses was debating this on Mount Sinai. <laughs> Probably not. Which comes first, EQ or compression? When it comes to mixing. Um, I had a video just the other day where, I think my last video, I was mixing a bass track and somebody said something like, hey, you had compression first, I thought EQ always goes first. And so it's time to talk about that. I've talked about it before. I don't think I've done a video just about this. If I have, who cares? It's worth repeating because there's the truth is worth repeating. So real quick, if you haven't seen my intro to EQ or my, I think it's three rules of EQ video and six rules of compression, be sure to check those out on this channel after you watch this video if you're still a little hazy as to what these are and how to use them. But which comes first? So... Do I EQ first and then compress the EQ signal? Or do I compress it first and then EQ the compressed signal? Is there, is there a proper order? Is there a way that you sh should do it? I don't like the word should. We should all stop shoulding ourselves. <laughs> I just said should at the beginning of that sentence. Anyway, there's no... There is kind of a rule. I have a rule of thumb. I was going to say there's no rule, but there is for me in the way I do it. Doesn't mean it's the only way or even the proper way, but it works well for me. So I'm going to share it with you. Try it on some mixes. See how it works. Come back. Squeaky chair. I've had this chair for a really long time. It squeaks at all the wrong moments. Good. It just did it again. Come back, go try this the way I'm gonna tell you in this video. Then come back and leave a comment. Let me know what, if it worked. Because it may not work for everybody. Maybe different styles of music or just the, the way you hear things, you might like it differently. Here's what I say. Compression does this, right? It's a squishy machine. It means it's gonna take these things down, these things up, and then you're gonna turn the overall volume up, generally speaking. So if things down here are unpleasant, they're going to be turned up. Okay? However, sometimes the things down here are pleasant and you want them to be turned up. So how do you know which is which? Here's my rule of thumb. Write this down. I've been rambling up until this point. I'm about to make some sense. If the track already... Hold on before I say that. First of all, you don't have to EQ and compress at all. There is no rule that says you have to put EQ and compression on every track or on every bus or whatever. I don't. I don't recommend that you do it either. The first question you have to ask is, does this track, whatever I'm listening to, does it need EQ? Does it need compression? Answer that question first. If the answer is no, forget this video, move on with your day. If the answer is yes, then make sure it does need both. If it's acoustic guitar, for me, bang for my buck, a little bit of EQ and I'm done. Rarely will I compress an acoustic guitar. Kind of the same for electric. If it's bass or drums, usually I'm getting both because that's what I think the sound needs. So if that question is answered, let's say we're talking about drums, I almost always compress and EQ my drums because it almost always needs it. Let's use that as an example. Which ones come first? Here's my rule of thumb. If the track already sounds pretty good, and you know you wanna use compression, go ahead and compress. If there aren't any glaring issues, glaring faults, resonant frequencies that are giving you a headache or making you wanna punch somebody, then go ahead and compress the sound. The sound of compression will sound good because the track already sounds good. Compression is just a truth teller. It just brings out more of what's there, kinda. So if it already sounds good, this will just bring out more of the goodness. For example, great sounding drum recording. 
uh, where you've got all this great tone in the drums and you've got some great room sound and there's resonance and things like that happening. You add some good compression, you get more snap out of the kit, more punch, but then you also are bringing up kind of that resonance that's happening. That sounds good. The sound of the room, the, the, the sound bouncing around the place, that's all that quiet signal down here that's being turned up a little bit by compression. That's all pleasant and good. We're all happy and excited to be there. Then after you've done that, you can say, okay, now I want to EQ the drums. It needs a little less mid-range, a little more low end, maybe a little sparkle in the top end or whatever. You know, if you're EQing drums, try a cut at 400 hertz. It almost always works. That's the rule of thumb. Flip it around. Let's say you got a drum kit and you're listening. You say, Moof, doesn't sound great. The snare is ringing like a doorbell. Uh, the kick drum's kind of flabby and I don't really care for the room sound I'm hearing out of the tracks already. Well, in that case, what I would do is I would EQ it first. EQ to me, compression to me is a tone tool. It's like, hey, let's make this cooler. EQ to me is a fix it tool. Hey, let's repair some of these broken things. Now, of course, get it right at the source. Don't try to mix garbage material. But if it's not there and it needs some work before you would say, hey, that sounds great, then I would EQ it. Once I've EQ'd it and got it sounding good, guess what? Now we're back to throwing some compression on there to make the good sound gooder. Okay, let's review. If it sounds good, do it this way. No, <laughs> I just got it backwards because I'm dumb. If it sounds good, do it this way. Compress it first and then EQ it. If it doesn't sound good, it's got an EQ problem. EQ it first to get it sounding good, then add in all that beautiful, luscious compression. Okay? It's simple, it works, and there are absolutely times where I completely do not follow this rule and I do it the other way. But most of the time, that works well for me. Thanks so much for watching this rambly video from me. My name's Joe. If you want more from me, subscribe to this channel. Go explore. There's a lot of good stuff there, um, especially the rules videos. If you search for rules, I've got some different rules about EQ, compression, mixing, and a few other things. Um, secondly, if you want to read something I've written about recording, specifically about mixing, about my process for mixing, kind of start to finish in five, mm, five steps, go check out fivestepmix.com. It's a free download. Also gets you on my email list, which is just a lot of fun and you're missing out if you're not on there. Okay, that's it for me. By the way, next time you see me, I'll be in a new studio. I'll tell you about it later. See ya.